According to Minecraft statistics, I've played for a total of 19.46 days, which equates to 467 hours here in my Minecraft survival world. So far, I've gotten a whole lot done in nearly half a year's time, but what takes me the longest is building my landscape from scratch, so in this video, I'm going to be landscaping until my statistics say 20.46 days at the end. So since I've got 24 hours of hard work ahead of me, let's not waste any time and get right into it. Let me just start off by telling you that 24 hours is a long time, and I thought I was prepared with a backlog of podcasts to carry me through this, but I ended up listening through 24 hours worth of content, so those three-hour podcasts I had saved up that I always put off because they're too long found their place this time. Ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a just getting my wings repaired. My first priority when starting the project for this video was to finish off some unfinished cliff faces I've left unattended for probably a few weeks now, and a big problem with building custom terrain and survival is the sheer amount of resources you tear through. After this video, I think I've placed over a hundred thousand stone blocks total in this world, and I'm likely to place a few hundred thousand more, to be honest. The strange spider web I'm building here is the rough sketch of my mountain towering all the way up to build limit. I had a lot of time on my hands to burn, so why not build a mountain all the way up to world height, at least part of it. But pretty close to starting this insane project, I ran out of stone completely, so I moved on to building some dirt paths up the mountain. A pro tip when building terrain is to build your pathways first. Trust me, it saves a lot of hassle down the line when you realize there's no good way to traverse your custom world. So definitely build those pathways first. The pathway up to the summit of the mountain gives a really nice view of my existing world and the castle on the other side of the valley. Having your sight lines planned out from the beginning and thinking about the different angles and views in a large scale build like this is something that really improves it in the end. I'm really happy that there are pathways leading from spawn into the kingdom, and some of you may know exactly how much I love my tunnels and arches, so I decided that one of the pathways would lead into the valley through a tunnel. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, I just ran through all my dirt and stone, and I was just getting into the groove building that mountain. Like, I just realized exactly how I want this thing to look in the end, but I'm all out. To put it into perspective, all these shulker boxes were full of dirt and stone, respectively. Like, I don't know which ones had dirt or stone, but yeah, there was a lot. But hey, I'm only like seven hours of building into this thing anyway, so we got plenty of time. So how about I spend the next few hours, because I got a lot of them to burn, collecting some resources, specifically wood, leaves, stone, and dirt. Roll the super ultra fast collecting time lapse. Oh yeah. I spent a few hours collecting blocks, and whenever I do some grinding, I usually go all out and collect at least a few shulker boxes of all the materials I need. At this point, it was a nice break for me to not put any creative pressure on myself and just mindlessly hack away at blocks while listening to some philosophy podcasts. To build or not to build, that is indeed the question. The biggest perk of being in a mushroom biome, aside from the lovely grass that's always greener, is that you don't have to light anything up to prevent mob spawns. At this point, my world is getting totally out of hand and spilling into the surrounding biomes, and boy, does the shadow of my mountain work well as an accidental mob farm. All right, so in that time lapse, I just collected up 10 shulker boxes of stone and seven shulker boxes of dirt, so I should be good to go for building what I want to build right here, but for now, I am pretty sick of placing down stone and dirt blocks, so I'm going to be getting back to that in a bit. I mean, we have plenty of hours to do that. So what I'd like to do is put in some more detail over here in the world and start building some trees. But to do that, we of course need the wood and leaves to build some custom trees. So let me get some leaves and some wood collected and I will start building some trees. I think this is going to be awesome and a sweet break from just straight up terraforming. At this point, I was about nine hours in and itching to do something a bit more detailed than cliffs. So I decided to build a little bit of a waterfall right here that goes all the way into this stream that I actually built as part of this 24 hour challenge right before this. But 
For some reason, I miraculously lost that footage, but that was an hour spent, and in my opinion, an hour well spent, because I've been long overdue to build this water stream that goes all the way down into my nether portal forest. My favorite part of this section is this wooden bridge that I make across the water that's right by the waterfall. It just came together really organically and contrasts well with the stone bridge that's right beside it. A lot of areas that have been around forever just feel a lot more lived in after this challenge, so I'm really happy I did it in the end. When it comes to trees, I went totally crazy and pretty much built a whole forest. I have so many trees to build in my world and I feel like I barely made a dent into the total that I need to build, but when looking back at this footage, it actually makes a huge difference. I really love building trees for some reason. It's just a very systematic and relaxing thing to do. Luckily, it's one of those things that really makes your world look unique and great if you make some custom trees, so I'm happy I enjoy it. This is the section where I really start to go nuts and build some huge trees. I went into a lot of detail building the ground under the canopies and really making it feel like an overgrown, enchanted forest. To me, the tree building was definitely the highlight of this 24-hour process. And by the way, every time the sun goes up and sets, that is 10 minutes the flashes by, so that can give you some perspective how fast this footage actually is and how much time I really spent on this. You might notice that I'm leaving a large, empty space in the forest where I actually plan to build a huge tree in the future, but I figured I'd dedicate it its own episode, so I'm very much looking forward to do it now that the surroundings are in place. And while the rest of this forest is being speedily built, I would just like to take the time to say that this is exactly the kind of thing I do on my channel, so if you're new and you're enjoying the video, feel free to consider hitting that subscribe button because it really helps out my small channel. And if you appreciate the time I sacrificed to make this mega video, a like would mean a great deal to me. But enough shameless self-promotion, let's see what I have to say in real time. Over to me. I'm super happy with what my custom forest looks like right now. I think it fills up that empty space really, really nicely and gives that lush feel I want over here. I really want these trees to be hiding what I have in the forest, which is this little area over here. So for those of you who don't know, this is my nether portal area. My nether portal is down here and well, we have company from the nether. And as soon as I have the huge tree I'm planning on putting right here in there, it's gonna cap off this area really, really nicely. But I do feel like it feels way more like a forest now and not just like a few trees around this little valley. And it makes me really excited for what this world's going to look like when everything is just treed out. But yeah, I've got like six hours of work left to do, maybe even seven. So. And I've been building trees for a long time. So let's head back to this project and really try to finish this off. Because right now this is just looking like scaffolding, not really looking that great. So let's just get into the build. So let's just start placing down some blocks, fill all these areas in and try to get to the back side of this place so that I can connect this part of the world and all of this down to spawn over here. Let's continue the mega time lapse. After a nice break from the mountain building, I was ready to tackle the peak again and finish a large section of it. One thing you'll inevitably run into if you build terrain the way I do is that you exponentially increase the amount of work you're going to have to do on the backside the more you add to it. But eventually, I would like to have everything connected to the naturally generated terrain seamlessly transitioned in. I think that's going to look super cool, and at this point, nearly 500 hours into the world, seeing all the progress I've made so far, I'm confident that I'm going to make that happen. And listen, I can make that happen pretty fast at this pace, although maybe 24-hour episodes will be somewhat of a rarity. But who knows, if this video does well, I'll take that as a sign to do it again. So if you want me to suffer again and build for 24 hours, maybe building buildings the whole time instead, send this video to all your friends who might be interested, tell your neighbors about it, and let everybody know that Antler Boy does not mess around when it comes to making unreasonable promises about building challenges. And hey, I know I was supposed to only landscape in this mega challenge, but I was worn out at this stage. I'd built for 21 hours and I wanted a break from the stone and dirt, so I decided to start freehanding a watchtower. I got the idea because the tower would have a perfect view of all the ways to enter the valley from this peak, and I love building towers, so this was an opportunity I couldn't resist. 
I ended up changing the color of the pointed roof several times and settled on gray concrete in the end, so this pink color you're seeing right now did not make the final cut. At this stage of the process, I was tired, my body was sore and achy, my eyes hurt, and I still had two hours to go before I was done with this challenge. But I wasn't about to back down. Admittedly, I took the easy road out and finished off by building some more trees and laid down a poppy field. Overall, I feel like I got a lot done, but honestly, I thought I would get even more built in 24 hours. But this has at least given me a realistic time frame of how fast I build. I was hoping to get the whole backside of these mountains towards spawn finished, but I guess that's just something I'll have to do in the coming videos. Oh my goodness, it has been such a long time. I even changed up this roof to be gray instead of the colorful. It just, it clashed too much with the blue flag and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm liking this, but I think it looks better. But ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. Statistics all the way down 20.46. This means we have been building for 24 hours and I am so tired. I need to go take a nap. After spending all this time building, this actually means that we're really, really close to hitting 500 hours in this survival world, and I don't intend on stopping any time soon. So, if you would like to see what my future plans are for this world, remember to click that subscribe button and hit that bell. I am glitching out right now. I am not sure what's happening to my character. But ladies and gents, that will be all for today. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I poured everything I had into it, so... I look forward to seeing you next time, and until we do, have a good one.